Hi folks, today I'm going to show you how to create your own certificate authority with XCA. XCA is open source software and you can check out their website by doing a Google search or going to hunstat.de forward slash XCA. When you check out their website, um, you'll see that uh, there are a number of pre-compiled binaries for uh, Mac OS X, Windows, and Linux. And if you're running Mac, you can install them via Mac ports and Homebrew. Pretty cool. Once you launch XCA for the first time, you're greeted with a blank application like you see here, and you're going to have to create your first database. So go to File, New Database, give it a useful name, save the file in a folder that you choose, and when you create the database, you'll have to give it a password. Uh, remember the password, that'll be a good idea. Now, when you create the database, you'll also want to set it so that it's the default, so whenever you open XCA, it will open up the database for you. Let's go ahead and create our first root and intermediate CA certificates. We start by going to create a new template. We're going to use the default template for a CA, makes it easy for us. And then we're going to type in the distinguished name values of our choosing. This will make our CAs uh, consistent with each other. So type in whatever values are appropriate for your country, state, locality, or city, uh, organization name, and your organizational unit. Uh, this is just going to be a template, so we're going to leave the common name and email address blank uh, for the time being. We go to extensions. Um, there's a number of different things you can add in here. For now, we'll leave these at the default. 10 years seems to be appropriate for a root CA, so we'll leave that alone. Uh, key usage. The template uh, has already been defined as certificate sign and CRL sign. We'll leave those at default. Netscape of SSL CA. SMIME CA, object signing CA, that'll be appropriate. And uh, we can you know, give a, a Netscape comment to make our certificates a little bit more identifiable when we look at the details. Uh, everything else can pretty much be left at the default and hit OK. And we have successfully created a template for our CAs. So we'll go to certificates and we'll click on new certificate to create our first root CA certificate. We're going to select our new template that we just created and hit apply all which actually sets all of the settings in the above tabs that we looked at earlier and another important fact is that we are going to self sign this certificate because it is a root ca so it will sign itself click on subject and now finally type in lab ca root for our common name you can name this whatever you like and we're going to create a brand new key for our root ca We'll choose 4096 bit uh, and we'll hit create and we'll have successfully created our RSA key. This key will be used to uh, sign its, its own certificate. Uh, we're going to give it an internal name. Again, this is the internal name that shows up on the left hand column in the application. And we'll accept basically all of the defaults that we chose in our template previously. And we can click through the rest of the tabs to see if we're happy with the rest of the fields. I didn't cover CRLs, but this would be the area where we add a certificate revocation list URL. But once we're good to go, we click OK, and we have successfully created our root CA certificate. Now, this certificate will be used to uh, sign our intermediate CA. So let's go ahead and start that process. We go back to certificates, and we're going to click on New Certificate. And we're going to follow the same procedure as we did earlier. We'll select our lab CA template, and we're going to click on apply all, which will set all the above settings as before. This time we're going to use the root CA's key to sign this certificate, and that will be used to create our chain of trust. We are going to then select subject, put in an internal name, this time lab CA intermediate. We're going to fill out the common name uh, to something similar. We're going to make it match in this example. and uh, we're also going to click on generate a new key. So the root certificate has its own key and their intermediate CA has its own key. And this time we're going to click on remember as a default because the intermediate will be used for all future signing operations. We'll click on extensions and we are going to select 10 years as well for our intermediate certificate. This will generate a warning at the very end because technically, well, um, it's only been a few minutes, this certificate will actually expire a few minutes after the root. So we're going to adjust the date and time and continue. 
And after this step, we have successfully created our intermediate CA certificate. If you expand the root CA, you can now see our intermediate uh, CA certificate listed below. So it is organized by issuer. And as we add additional certificates later on, they're going to be expanded underneath the intermediate CA. Now what you can do is actually export each of these uh, certificates so that you can import them into either browsers or operating systems. When you are exporting this root CA, you want to be real careful that you don't accidentally export your CA private keys. Okay, We are just going to use either a PEM format uh, or a binary format uh, with just the public certificate. And we'll do the same for the intermediate CA. We'll go ahead and export the public certificate and uh, choose the output format. And if you switch over to your Finder or your File Explorer, whatever your operating system you have, you can actually take a look at those certificates. If you chose a PEM formatted uh, or text option, you can actually open up it in a text editor and you can see the ciphertext as well as some of the distinguished name attributes and comments if you chose to export them. You can also uh, take a look at your intermediate key as well and see the same type of detail. And now your certificates are ready for import. So now we'll show you how to import the CA certificates in Microsoft Windows if you haven't done it before. It's fairly straightforward. You're going to open up your file explorer and you're going to locate your root and intermediate certificates. If you double click on the certificate, the certificate dialog opens up and you can now take a little closer look at the details of these certs. And you can see the issued to and issued by are listed below and these certificates are not trusted clearly. So uh, we're going to show you how to actually install these into the appropriate uh, certificate stores. To do that, we're going to go to our start menu, click run, and we'll type in uh, MMC. We will uh, select file and add snap in, and we're going to add the certificates snap in. We'll choose uh, my computer account, hit finish, and click OK and we'll expand the certificate store for the local machine. Here is the trusted root certification authorities and also the intermediate certification authorities. And this is where we will install these certificates. So if we go to the root uh, CA certificate, we'll click on install, we'll click on local machine, accept the dialog, and we're gonna be specific and place the certificates in the trusted root certification authorities folder and we'll click on next finish and we're done let's go ahead and close that dialog window we're going to do the same thing for the intermediate by selecting local machine and we'll place the certificate now in the intermediate certification authorities folder and click ok and you'll see that it's successful now, if we relaunch these um, certificates, or if you look at the MMC snap and again and refresh, you'll see that the root certificate is now installed and it is fully trusted and OK. If we take a look at the intermediate CA certificate, refreshing the MMC, you'll see it now appears. And if we double click on that, this CA certificate is also uh, trusted and it is signed by the root. And now with these certificates in the appropriate certificate stores, anytime the operating system or applications are presented with a certificate that has been signed by our CAs, then uh, they will be trusted and validated. Now with Mac OS X, it's a little bit different, actually a little easier. If uh, you open up your Mac OS X desktop, go to Launchpad and type in Keychain Access, launch the system keychain and you're presented with a number of different folders on the left you're going to choose the category of certificates and if you click on the system folder this is where you can place all of your ca certificates we're going to open up our uh, certificates that we created earlier and simply click and drag uh, these two certificates into your um, system store put in your password or use your biometric and if you double click on the uh, root certificate, you'll see that this actually is not trusted yet. Click trust, click always trust, close, and you'll have to use your password again to save that setting. 
and you now see that the certificate is now trusted. We'll do the exact same for the intermediate uh, certificate authority. Click and drag, uh, double click, and you'll see that this actually is trusted because we already trusted the signing or the issuer of the intermediate, which was our root. We'll also change this to trust and we will uh, put in our password accordingly. Now we are now done for anything in Mac that uses the certificates. Now, Firefox is one of those cases where um, the application does not look at the system store. So uh, on Windows or Mac, you'll actually have to go uh, into Firefox's uh, preferences and import these certificates. We're gonna just open it up in Firefox uh, with file open and install the root and intermediate certificates in this way. So uh, open file, select the certificate, hit open, and choose to trust these certificates. You can actually view the certificate data and see you know, what, uh, uh, what you're importing, and choose OK. And now Firefox will now trust your certificate authority signatures. And with that, I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. As a quick summary, we have generated a brand new uh, root and intermediate CA certificate chain. Uh, we have uh, created a CA certificate template for future CAs or intermediate CAs. Uh, and uh, as a follow-up to this video, I plan on showing you how to take advantage of certificate revocation lists that you should add to your templates, as well as generating a number of different certificate types and uh, the templates that uh, represent them, uh, such as server certificates, client certificates, uh, a user certificate where you can use that for signing emails, and a number of other applications. Thank you very much for watching. Take care.